Hi everyone and welcome to the V12 lab. My name is Elad Zmora, I'm the product manager of the V12 and welcome here in Israel. So first of all, we'll start but we'll be with what is the V12. The V12 is an indigo with the indigo print quality and substrate versatility that run in the speed of a fla fast fla flexo. It's 400 feet per minute or 120 meters per minute. As you can see around, we are located in the lab, in the V12 lab, where we have four full-blown prototypes and we are working day in, day out in order to deliver this press as fast as possible to market. A full-blown prototype meaning that it's very close to the final configuration. So behind me, it's prototype number four. Let's go with me here. So what you can see here in my left-hand side is LP3, lab prototype number three. And you can see it's a naked frame. The reason it's a naked frame, we currently, this week, we are upgrading this press to what we are calling cluster six. Cluster six is the last major upgrade that we're going to have before the alpha testing. Let me describe in short what is the, pro what is the, what is the development process. We start by a marketing configuration, then we are testing the subsystem of the press, and then we integrate it all to a cluster, a press that works together with all the subsystems the inline priming, the printing engine, the utility cabinet, etc. So this is the last major upgrade before alpha testing in which we simulate production environment here in our own labs. And then we it will be followed by a beta testing, which is meant to send those presses to the first customers. Let's walk to see the rest of the lab. To my side here, it's LP2, the second prototype. And I will now will go to LP1, which is the press that I will use to perform the demo. Just before I perform the demo, I would like to explain briefly what is the LEPX technology, the technology that's behind the V12. Let's see a short slide here. So as you can see here, we have side by side the LEP technology and the LEPX technology. What you used to get from the LEP technology is centralized drum. The process speed of the LEP is also 120 meters per minute. But with LEP technology, the same that you have in your 6K, your 6900, each and every additional ink that you will add will require additional round of the drum. So, for example, if you are printing CMYK, then it's 120 meters per minute divided by 4, so the speed of the press will be 30 meters per minute. With the LEPX, the V12 architecture, we modify the architecture to an inline configuration. The LEPX will have six different sub-engines, as you can see here in the, in, the, in the image. And for each sub-engine, you will have two color stations. So every rotation of the blanket, you will be able to produce a label with up to six colors without losing speed. If for some reason you would like more than six colors, because the V12 will have 12 colors pre-installed on the press, you would like to have a seventh color or an eighth color or up to 12 different colors, you will go through a second rotation of the blanket and then the speed will be 60 meters per minute. The LEP and the LEPX will have the same substrate versatility and application versatility. And the, L and the V12 with the LEPX will offer superior print quality since we introduce a new writing head with a 1600 DPI native DPI resolution. Now, why do you need 12 colors? This is for two main reasons. The first one, we would like you to print any label, which meaning C process color, CMYK, OVG, white, double hits, spot colors, silver, security feature with invisible inks. All of those, you, the brands will require it. You can print it in a single pass. And second, by having 12 colors on the, on the press, your 12 most common colors, you will hardly never have to stop the press and doing a color changeover, which consumes time, which consumes time. So all of your effort will be dedicated to production of sellable labels. Now let's understand what are the main building blocks behind the V12. So what I'm holding here in my hand is the Series 3, the 6000, or the 6900 digital plate. You call it the PIP. So we need to modify the PIP. We need to modify the PIP in order to, uh, in order to withstand the very uh, heavy duty kind of lifting that we expect the V12. 
Since we have six digital plates on the V12, it does not make sense to doing a frequent changeovers of the pips. So here we developed what we are calling the acid, amorphous silicon drum. So this is the digital plate of the V12. We have six of them. And the lifespan of the acid is 70 times longer than the lifespan of the pip. So you will hardly need to stop and do a digital plate changeover. Now I'm holding the blanket of Series 3, the 6K blanket. It's almost one meter long. And again, for the V12, we need to modify the blanket. We need to modify the blanket so it will be able to incorporate six engines working together. So I'm holding here in my hand the V12 blanket. Quite long. It's nearly 5.5 meter long which enables you a better frame utilization, about 10 or 20% better frame utilization. And in addition, it's much more tougher and robust than the blanket of Series 3. So the lifespan of the blanket will be significantly longer. And in the future plan, we are working on a stitchless blanket in which you can go fully rotary. The last major upgrade that we did for the V12 is the writing head. So I'm pointing here to the 6K writing head. It's an amazing piece of technology in the heart of the indigo print quality. So you have the laser light source pointing to a rotating mirrors, and then a series of lenses all the way to deposit on the blanket. Now, this is a great technology, but it's quite the right, this writing head is quite big. So the V12, we had to develop a new writing head, which I'm holding in my hands. It's 10 times smaller than the writing head that we used to have. In addition, we will improve the PQ since this is a 1600 native DPI resolution. So those three are the, more, are the major upgrade that we introduced for the V12. So if you will follow me, let's see the press. So in my right hand side, this is the V12. Prototype number one. And it starts like any indigo from right to left. Here we have the unwinder of the V12, specialty designed to a front, a front maintenance. In addition to this unwinder, we're going to have enhanced productivity solutions like butt splicer, turret rewinders. This press is supposed to be a productivity beast and we wanted to do non-stop printing. So let's follow the web. The web is moving to the ILP. And the ILP, again, it's a newly designed ILP starting from the corona treatment, corona treatment here, priming the position, we have anilocks and rubber roller to the drying, that as you can see here, it's vertical. Unlike the dryer that you used to have in your 6K or 6900, and it's all specially designed to support the productivity of printing 120 meters per minute. From here, the web is moving to a web guide sensor. The purpose of the web guide sensor is to make sure that the web is, is accurately positioned to the printing engine, going to the buffer station, all the way to the impression drum, in which the image is transferred from the blanket to the web. So now the web will move to a series of cameras and sensors. You can see here, this is the inline scanner, spectrophotometer and we have additional array of sensors that measure and fix the registration, the scaling, and other parameters. And this is more important to the V12 than any other press, because when you are running very large jobs of tens of thousands of meters, of tens of thousands of meters, then the operator must have the assurance that he's printing quality labels. The yields are extremely important. And it's very difficult to follow with your naked eye a web that's moving in this kind of speed. So here the operator will have a digital assurance that is printing quality material. Now let's move to the printing engine. The printing engine is the heart of the LEPX technology. As you can see, we have a large blanket that go all the way, nearly 5.5 meter long blanket. And it's wrapped six different engines. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Each of those engines will have 
to ink station, meaning all together the V12 will offer 12 different inks permanently uh, installed on the press for your disposal. So you can see here the acid. The acid is moving all the way. You have a cleaning station here, same, basically the same as your 6K charge roller, the newly designed writing head, ink station number one and ink station number two. So the web is moving. You can have in the top speed of 120 meters per minute, you have up to six colors, which we believe will cover the majority of your job basket. If for some reason you would like to have 12 colors on the press, then the blanket will go over a second rotation and the speed will be 60 meters per minute. It's 200 feet per minute. It will go to the four dryers that we have here and will be transmission, transmitted through the impression drum to the web. And with me here is Ronen Yosifun. Ronen is the head of the HP Indigo user experience team. When we designed the V12, it was, it was a, like a given from day one to enhance the productivity of the press. We need to take care of user experience as a number one priority. So Ronen, first of all, hi, and uh, please introduce yourself and your team. Hi guys. So my team carries uh, the user experience team carries uh, psychology behaviors, um, industrial designers, visual designers, and interactive designers. We take care of all design aspects, customers design aspects of the press itself. And as Elad mentioned, we were actually a part of the design from day one. Okay. So uh, maybe I'll just show you some of the stuff. I think what's important to understand that the V12 we designed the, the V12 with our customers. Our main team asked for a leading customer to send their leading operators here to Israel for a long workshop in which we asked them to design the press of their dream. And they guided us, they taught us what they would like to see in the future Indigo. So, one of the key goals was to reduce user tendency as much as possible, allowing our operators to do actual work rather than walking around the press over and over. This is what we do, why we designed the press to be fully frontal, i.e. allowing the operator to maintain 90 to 95% of the daily maintenance or each maintenance the press needs without the need of walking back and forth through the press. Additionally, if you look over here, we have 12 inks to maintain. 12 inks that the users have to switch and, and, and handle. This is why we actually provided two inks per ink station, where every time that one ink is being emptied, the other one is switching over, allowing more time and more time is crucial uh, for the operators to actually do the work and have enough time on, a, on their hands to run the speed of the press as it should be. So by using 12 inks on the press, we allow our customer to enjoy two, two elements. First one, print any kind of label in a single pass. 12 colors, it's, an, it's really a lot. The second is never waste time on ink changeovers. You will have your 12 most common inks on the press available to your disposal and you will hardly need to, to waste any time to do a color changeover to support continuous productivity and continuous printing. As Elad mentioned before, we brought customers from all over the world to come and guide us, to help us define and design the user experience of the press. One of the key issues was how to interact with the press itself. We came up with this solution, which is actually the operator station of the operators themselves. We divided the screen, the three screens over here, to three main objects. The first one, was the job management monitor, which allowed queuing of the job, seeing what first, what come next, etc. And the second one was actually defining the status of the press in real time. Every time something happens in the press, we'll get immediate indication where the problem is, what is the root cause of the problem, allowing the operator to, to go, again, full frontal, and uh, interact with the, with the uh, how to fix the, the problem. In addition, one of the key issues that we had before is having operators seeing with their own eyes the print quality of the job. In the V12, 
we cannot. The speed is too fast, as you can see. No human eye can actually see the PQ, the, the printing quality of the job. This is why we introduced a third monitor that allows us to inspect the whole printed job, whether it's CCC, CPR, scaling, or even e any kind of defects you have on the, on the printing job. The way that you handle it is just stopping the press immediately, losing a lot of waste from the, from the printed job. Okay, so basically we have three major screens. One of them, it's about the production floor. You have all your jobs in the queue. You will know in advance when to change color, when to uh, fill a missing tank. Uh, if you, some job will instantly will come to the production floor, an urgent job, you can put it in the queue and it will do the optimization in the background. So this is about job to job handling. Second is the indication about the mechanical status of the press itself. Everything will be approachable from this screen. You will be able to open a ticket, communicate with the remote, uh, remote center, uh, get recommendations, etc. And the third screen is in the job level. You will have the assurance that you are printing quality sellable labels. Neither to say, this is of course all touch-based application, fully touch, same as iPad, same as iPhones. Everything is included here. Furthermore, it wasn't enough. We actually added more interaction areas across the, the press itself, such as in every each of the inks over here, we'll have a monitor that is defines and describes to the user the status of the inks themselves. How much time will take to replace it, how much ink will remain in each one of the cans, etc. Further along the press, we have two more dedicated screens. One to operate the print engine. The print engine itself will have a dedicated screen for operators that need to maintain uh, the print engine. So they will we'll have an interaction area next to them just for that. And at, at the end of the press, at the rewinder side, we'll have an additional monitor to support unloading uh, substrate, uh, uh, loading substrate, and of course all the priming uh, unit issues over there. So actually we have a, a full interaction areas across the press, allowing the operator not to move from one place to another, but interact with the press and print, print, print. Okay. So this was the productivity in mind mindset that we introduced to the V12. Now let's see the press in action. So here in the rewinder, you can see an indigo printing in the speed of 120 meters per minute. It's 400 feet per minute. Okay, so just before we'll say goodbye, we, we ask our customers often, what is how you decide whether to put the job on an Indigo, on a Flexo, or on a web offset? So many times a day, our customers scratch their head and say, is this job is too long for an Indigo? Is it too short for a Flexo? So we believe that with the V12, this dilemma will be over. Just put it on the Indigo. So thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you here and goodbye.